Michigan Magazine is kept on the road by our many Michigan friends. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare. A winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Experience the beauty, artistry, and taste of northern Michigan. Come to Amish Country Natural Products on Mount Tom Road, north of Mile, just off M33. From arts and crafts to fresh foods and vegetables, all natural, all local, all good. Stop by and get acquainted with Amish Country Natural Products. 1454 North Mount Tom Road, Mile. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare. What began as a crazy idea among nine police officers to purchase the historic Clare City Bakery quickly became an international phenomenon. Carrying on a Michigan tradition with delicious donuts, pies, pastries, breads, original coffee, and more. Plus a full menu at the new adjacent Traffic Stop Diner. Downtown Clare, a winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Today, it's business as usual in the Great Lakes State. We first travel to a business in Michigan that has been flavoring the world for decades. Loran Oil Company, an originally home-based company that has tastefully grown beyond expectations. Then we visit a company in Edmore that faced hard times and bankruptcy. It threatened the livelihood of its loyal employees. Then three of those employees decided this was not going to happen. Through perseverance and focus, they bought the company and made it a thriving worldwide presence. Those stories coming up on Michigan Magazine. The Michigan-made rebounding mailbox poll. Never again worry about the winter snowplow taking out your mailbox with this ingenious rebounding poll. Your mailbox takes a hit and keeps coming back year after year. Call now or visit their website, toughmailboxes.com. When you think of Christmas candy, besides the usual candy canes and ribbon candy, the thoughts of that delicious hard candy everyone seems to be making at home nowadays comes to mind. These familiar one and two dram bottles of flavoring oils are becoming more and more popular around the American household. Thanks to the foresight of this man, the late Orrin Grettenberger of Okemos, Michigan. Orrin is a founder of the Loran Oil Company. The popularity of this product has steadily grown from small quantities of flavoring being sold over the counter of the Grettenberger Pharmacy in the 60s to those wanting to make hard candy for the holidays to an ultra-sophisticated packing plant, employing 15 people year-round that supplies the nation with 61 flavors of oils and basic flavorings. Michigan Magazine visited the Loran Oil Company recently where we talked first with Orrin's daughter, Ann Shaver who recall those early days of the company when she was one of three employees working out of a basement, filling bottles and packing them by hand. Three young ladies sitting at a table running this instrument here and doing it all by hand, uh -huh. pouring the oil down there and it runs into this bottle and then we had to cap it and seal it all by hand and label it and box it. and. That's what three women did. Three day women in, did. Day in and, and day, day out. out. And that was back in 1971? Mm-hmm. Okay. And today, I mean, at that time, you put out how many bottles of that? We thought we were doing really well if we went through two boxes of bottles, and I think, <laughs> that, and that's a lot. Yeah. By hand. Yeah. And, and today uh, it's... And today it's really grown. But then we only did, I think, about eight, eight flavors. We did yeah. peppermint, cinnamon, wintergreen, yeah. spearmint. Those Lemon were the and lime. Ones. Those were the yeah. popular. Yeah. That was how we did it by hand. We had to pour it from a smaller bottle into the tube. Uh -huh. And then um, That's that instrument right there. Right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then sit down and and um, drain it. What are we looking at here? It looks like you're watching a little bit of TV there. Oh, yeah. One of them soaps? We, 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 we did watch quite a few soaps when we were doing this. It's kind of boring if you're sitting there by yourself and just yeah. filling bottles all day long. <laughs> okay. And this is another another shot of you or somebody sitting there um, uh -huh. filling out the order. Mm, uh huh. <laughs> right. And we had to um, seal them and um, cap them all by hand and label them. And called it Loran because it's after my mother. My mother's name was Laura, uh -huh. and my name is Ann, so we called it Loran Oil. Well, no, how about that? And we started bottling it by hand. And you have customers. Uh, and uh, the marketing is throughout the world, is that right? All over the All world. All over the world. Mm -hmm. And it's, these are called what, dram? That's a dram. A dram. One, one dram, and that will make one complete batch of candy. And these not, are not only used for candies, but they're used for 
um, floats, can, uh, ice creams, uh, used pies, everything, everything, cooking, and they used in in frostings in uh, anything, and and a lot of potpourri. Has it been a surprise, or or is this the type of thing that you just thought naturally would happen? Uh, no, I don't think we ever uh, dreamed that it would grow like it has grown, but it's been exciting. It's been it, it's been fun, and we have a wonderful bunch of people that work for us. You think your father would uh, see it uh, where it's at today or, or beyond? Uh, That's interesting. I, I think he probably could, but I think I, my dad could dream better and uh, look ahead better than I could. Uh, he he uh, could see something and develop it. Develop it. He, and he, he did. He started it. He uh. developed it. And it's just grown. From hand packing a few thousand bottles to millions mass produced each year, the operation certainly has grown. We talked to Urban Brown, plant manager in charge of production, about the growing demand for Loran oils and how the demand is being met. We, uh, we try to start bottling uh, right around uh, February 1st. Uh, we start out on the two dram bottle. We get all done running the two dram, then we switch over and we run to the one dram. We like to have the bottling all done by, uh, I would say, uh, August, first of August. Okay. Uh, we start out, uh, like I said, in February. Last year we bottled almost two million bottles. Two million bottles. Right. Now, is this, a, is this somewhat of a seasonal type thing, or is this operational all, all 365 days of the it's year? It's all 365 days of the year, because bottling is just a portion of the, of the uh, job that goes on here. Mm -hmm. Because after we get done bottling the product, we have to go back and we have to blister, we have to package, mm -hmm. we have to uh, box it all up and get it on the shelves, right. ready for pickup in the fall when the orders start coming mm -hmm. in. It's, uh, it's really remarkable for the different things that these flavorings are used for. Give us some examples. I've had, uh, last year I had a company call me that was with a uh, reed instrument, uh, the instrument they use on clarinets and, and so on. They wanted to use a different type of flavoring to taint the reed with so it wasn't so a woody <laughs> cave. <laughs> That's different. I've also had uh, dentists call me and uh, want to use uh, Q-tip flavorings, different types of flavorings for the Q-tips for fluoride treatments. My! And uh, there's just an array so of... So there's a big expansion and uh, it really is uh, going out way beyond the candy and the uh, flavorings for sodas and, and uh, whatever. I mean, uh, all kinds of things are happening. A lot of it. people are uh, using the flavors for carbonated water also. To, um, and there's, you know, there's 61 different flavors, so, you know, it's just an array. You never get tired because there's a different <laughs> flavor all the time. The taste of Michigan's Loran oil is constantly spreading into new markets and uses. Gary Phipps was hired by Oren Grettenberger to manage Loran oils some 17 years ago. We talked to Gary about the future of Loran oils and how Oren and he got acquainted. You know, we have come a long way. Uh, I'm sure you've talked about the, the rest of the, with the rest of the employees about how we've grown from just kind of a seat of the pants operation from, uh, from the basement of a home to a trailer to finally a, uh, what we consider to be a state-of-the-art uh, manufacturing facility, packaging facility. We've come a long way, but uh, we anticipate and hope that we're gonna go a lot further. Um, we happen to be in kind of a niche market uh, where we fill uh, fill the needs, uh, the appetites, <laughs> all the appetites that are out there uh, for us chocolate lovers. <laughs> uh, people have been making uh, candy using yeah. uh, our flavorings and uh, recognizes those little bitty bottles. Yeah, uh, maybe not the name recognition that you'd have with uh, like a Hershey's or something like that, but um, they do recognize us by those little bottles and the, and, the, and the quality that goes with it. Right, we're in the office here, <clears throat> your office. And uh, this right here I see on the wall, uh, uh, the State Board of Pharmacy, uh, Mr. Orrin uh, Grettenberger uh, was a gentleman who started. Could you tell us how you and uh, Orrin got acquainted uh, and uh, what is uh, down the road here? How, how did that all happen? Well, Orrin and I became acquainted uh, probably over 20 years ago uh, when he had an involvement. He had a lot of state involvement uh, in politics and with the licensing of uh, pharmacists and mm -hmm. then Finally, it led him into one of his loves, which was uh, harness horses. And he was president of the Michigan uh, State Association, the Harness Horsemen's Association, of which I was an employee. I uh, got to know Gret, 
and uh, through that uh, he finally asked me if I'd like to come to work for him in private industry uh -huh. and, and to help to manage the business. So at that time uh, he was, uh, uh, had an ex extensive number of horses so we were able to coordinate what was going on here at the plant <laughs> yeah. as well as out the farm. So it was a nice blend and yeah. uh, that's, that's how we became acquainted uh -huh. and, and grew together. It was a wonderful opportunity for me to, uh, uh, to kind of be taken under Gret's arm and yeah. uh, under his wing and, and to grow and learn from uh, the vast uh, experience that he had. Yeah, well, that's great. And uh, is, are there any other new oils uh, that are coming on the, uh, on the market, there? that uh, any other new tastes that we can look for uh, in the future? Uh, the kiwi seems to be a, a, a kiwi, a kiwi oh, I love flavor. <laughs> uh, I've had uh, people from out in uh, Idaho have been after a huckleberry flavor. I'm not certain exactly what that, that uh, flavor is, but uh, we're trying to zoom in on that and trying to establish what a huckleberry flavor is. We're constantly uh, talking uh, with the employees, with our customers, trying to establish needs out there and, and expand into new markets. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've expanded into the coffee flavoring yeah. uh, market, which is really quite a hot item for us. We see a real, real market uh, developing there. Gary, the most exciting part of your life of being part of Warren Oils, can you sum that up for us? Uh, the exciting part is to be part of a successful organization. Uh, successful because the, the people here work so hard to put out a quality product and to take care of our customers. That's the joy, that's the fun, that's the reward. Well, on that note, folks, we're going to say thanks again, Gary, for being part of Michigan Magazine and continued success. Thank you very much. Michigan Magazine is being brought to you in part by the Cedar Tavern and Grill of Lupton, where friends come to meet friends and families come for delicious food and a wholesome atmosphere. Come relax with your favorite beverage or bring the crew for a great meal and live entertainment. It's happening now at the Cedar of Lupton. What does one do if they suddenly find out their job is in jeopardy? The business that they worked for has decided to call it quits, bankruptcy. Well, if you're like these two mid-Michigan men, Calvin Hunt and Bob Jensen of Edmore, you look into the possibilities of buying the company to secure your job security for your family and fellow employees. As far-fetched as that scenario sounds, that's kind of what took place back in 1991 when the Cedar Furniture Manufacturing Company they worked for for many years was about to close. Bob, Calvin, and another former employee took over and with an unparalleled determination took the floundering organization into a new and exciting era to become a multi-million dollar outdoor and indoor rustic furniture company that's been providing a livelihood for dozens of employees. Now wooden, outdoor and indoor rustic furniture manufactured by Lakeland Mills can be found not only at the big box stores like Walmart but also on the internet. Lakeland Mills roots actually extend back to the 1920s when it was started by the Great Lakes Adventist Academy of Holly where students were given the chance to work as trainees. That operation was sold in 1987 to a company that eventually declared bankruptcy in 91. This was the turning point for Lakeland Mills that eventually moved its operation into a 113,000 square foot manufacturing plant in Edmore, Michigan. We've been making cedar log furniture, uh, outdoor cedar log furniture since we bought it in 1991. And it goes back even further than that. The log furniture was actually started in about 1950, uh, and the trellis is what started in 1928. So we've been making the outdoor stuff for quite a few years, and about 10 years ago we uh, diversified a little more and started making indoor log furniture, bunk beds, things of that nature that people use inside their homes. And then last fall uh, we took another turn. Uh, Calvin Sun was actually the first person to ever put our stuff on the internet, and that was uh, 12 years ago. And since then, we've picked up a lot more uh, internet retailers, people that used to sell through catalogs uh, and mail order have now switched and done internet. Uh, your major retailers, and um, they also have uh, internet. Uh, it changes our season. When we were just making outdoor furniture, we had a season from um, New Year's Day to Memorial Day. And the other half of the year, we sold very little. Selling over the internet means the retail customer decides when they want to buy it. And so it's extended the season. 
and adding in the indoor furniture has also extended the season because that has no season. It's a different market. So we traditionally marketed our trellises and log furniture through traditional retailers. Mm -hmm. You can buy them in Menards, mm -hmm. Meyer stores, Ace Hardwares. Uh, but the handcrafted stuff is done all over the internet. Customers go to a website, our website, lakelandmills.com or others, mm -hmm. and uh, buy right online and we deliver directly to their door. And so it's, it's a different market, different customer. I, I think it's the quality mm -hmm. because we send stuff to doctors, we send stuff to people that that's the only purchase they're going to make for the year. Mm -hmm. um, People want something that will last, and this is made in the U.S., and we've seen so much stuff that doesn't last that's made other places. Um, you know, we have people call and ask us for uh, parts for swings to repair them that have had their swings for 15, 20 years. And uh, so people like something that will last, and uh, I've talked to all sorts of people. We ship all over the, uh, all over the country, and um, a week ago we shipped a bed to uh, Sweden and we've shipped truckloads into Canada and uh, to Norway uh, and got another truck going to Norway here in the next week or so, a uh, container load going to Norway. Locally owned and run, Lakeland Mills has that unique opportunity to make innovations that affects directly their customers in a very personal way. Take, for instance, their custom design department, where the Lakeland Mills team works one-on-one -on -one with customers to create that very special piece. Well, you know, it's something we've thought about for years, that we ought to do custom furniture for people, but when you're doing a standard production uh, facility, it's very hard to do. My, uh, my, my son started offering a few things online other than what we produced, and my youngest son would build them for him. And uh, I've seen the ease that he could do that with once he started, uh, you know, got into that. And so when the opportunity came along, then uh, we decided to try that. And we've expanded now just from our custom stuff that if people really want something, even in our standard uh, line, that we will custom build that for them. Um, and granted, they're going to pay more money for it but uh, they can have something that nobody else has. With innovations like that, along with happy employees that take pride in producing quality, durable products designed to last a lifetime, the company, despite a recession that's affected everyone, has seen steady growth since 1991. When we bought it in 1991, our first day, which is 10th of February 1991, <clears throat> we had 11 employees, and we did a half a million dollars of business that year. Now we do it about $3 million a year and we have 50 employees. It's somewhat seasonal, we still have a slower time, but about 50 employees that we keep busy most of the time. And, um, it keeps us busy. It certainly was a wonderful time we spent at this surviving and thriving Michigan business in Edmore. Surviving because of management's dedication and determination. Thriving because of a solid workforce with dedicated long-term employees. Some are second and third generation workers, or should we say craftsmen and women who pride themselves in producing quality Michigan products at competitive prices. We thank Lakeland Mills of Edmore for sharing their day with us. But before we left, the employees of this Michigan-based company had one more point to drive home before we hit the road. Buy our quality products at lakelandmills.com. Point well taken. Clemex Sales and Service on Mapes Road, west of Mile, your complete recreational vehicle sales and service connection. Visit their beautiful showroom of new and pre-owned ATVs, lawnmowers, power equipment, snowmobiles, utility vehicles, and more. Clemex Sales and Service is also the home of the American-made Victory Motorcycle Line on display at Clemex on Mapes Road, Mayo. It's back and making memories for a new generation. The Rustic Inn of Lewiston, now open to chase away those winter blues with hot, delicious food, your favorite beverage, and an atmosphere that'll keep you coming back to make new memories and new friends. The new Rustic Inn on Red Oak Road, just south of Lewiston. Vacation. Don't make the planning of it more than what you're trying to get away from. At NorthernMichiganCabinRentals.com, you can choose from over 2,500 cabins, cottages, lodges, resorts, lakefront vacation home rentals, and more. Whatever experience you're looking for, from rustic to luxury and everything in between. No more rustling with telephone books. No more endless internet searches. Just one site with over 2,500 Northern Michigan destinations. NorthernMichiganCabinRentals.com 
We hope you've enjoyed your visit as much as we have. We are excited about this week's phrase of the day. Spring is less than two weeks away. Hurry and send it to us along with your name and address to the address you see here on your screen. We're giving away oodles of great Michigan things. Have a great week and keep looking forward. See you next week here on RFD TV or online 24-7. We'd like to thank all those that help keep Michigan Magazine on the road. Cops and Donuts Bakery, Downtown Clare, a winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Hale Hardware, your do-it center at Hale, Michigan. Much more than a regular hardware store, providing everything you need for whatever your project is, along with a knowledgeable sales staff to get her done. Serving Northern Michigan since 1946. Hale Hardware, south of M65 at Ainsley in Hale. Hingeman Acres, Canoe Livery and Resort on M33, just north of Mayo, catering to the outdoor enthusiasts. Cabins, canoes, kayaks, rafts, and more. Daytime or overnight trips along the world-famous Asabo River. A family getaway for over 75 years. Something special's cooking hot and delicious. Indulge yourself at Morning at Maggie's in Bay City. Omelets, frittatas, hotcakes, and more. Make every day special with a stop at Morning at Maggie's for breakfast or lunch on Saginaw in Bay City.